or I guess the Reds have been a team for a long time, but I don't I don't know why that was a thing or the White Sox, Red Sox. That's why we're not threatening if you're just the color of a sock. So that can't be a rival. <laughs> Yes. One, two, swing and a drive toward right center. Back goes Robert. Back near the stands. That ball is gone. A game-winning home run for Chris Morrell. Can you believe it? Listen to this crowd. Welcome to the Brotherly Cubs podcast. I am John. This is my brother, Zach. We are your brothers who love everything Cubs baseball. If you enjoy talking about the Cubs, then hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and join us every week as we dive into the power, the speed, and the best team in the National League. We like to start off each podcast with a playful question for all 33 of our subscribers. Feel free to put your answers in the comments. Today, Zach, I ask you, who is the Cubs' biggest non-Cardinals rival and why? Wrong answers only. I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears, just because the Cubs are like the little brother to the Bears. Uh, <laughs> they're they're the talk of the town even though the bears haven't been super relevant in like feels like 16 years even though the cubs have won the world series more recent uh another team would be like the boston red sox because the red sox and the cubs are both cursed around the same time then the red sox won like 100 more world series than the cubs and now the cubs just look like also like a little brother to the red sox um, except right now, right now the Cubs are looking up. So I think those are the Cubs biggest non-Cardinals rivals, um, and the Brewers, but let's be honest, like, are the Brewers even a rival? I mean, they're good, but like, no one is really going to Milwaukee. People from Chicago travel to Milwaukee and there's no home fans there for those Cubs right. Brewers games. So I don't know. They're not very threatening to me, them and their cheese curds. <laughs> Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I would say the Brewers may be the biggest non-Cardinal rival. Uh, it seems like they're trading everybody off, though, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're willing to trade um, some positional players now. I think they had uh, – they just traded Corbin Burns. And they were making someone else available via trade. I'm not sure who it was. Who was the, the other player that was available? I Willie mean, Adamas. I, oh, I Willie also Adam. that's right. I feel like the Pirates should not be in the Cubs division because a bear and a pirate, those two don't it's really yeah, those are different worlds that they exist in, right? The forest versus the sea. They they're never gonna see each other. When's right. a pirate gonna see a bear? Yeah, that's very true. I mean, <laughs> cardinal, you might see a cardinal. A cardinal and a bear, <laughs> bear in the forest. Yeah, they they coexist in the same forest. Red, the color red might exist somewhere in the, <laughs> the realm of the Cubs. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know who names a team after a color. I don't know why that was a trend in the 30s or 50s or whenever. I guess the Reds have been a team for a long time, but I don't, I don't know why that was a thing. Or the White Sox, Red Sox. That's why we're not threatening if you're just the color of a sock. <laughs> so that can't be a rival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's now move on to the latest news around the league. The Cubs just released the list of non-roster invitees for spring training. Pitchers include right-handers Colton Brewer, Chris Clark, Carl Edwards Jr., Sam McWilliams, Ethan Roberts, Cam Sanders, and Riley Thompson, as well as some left-handers in Edwin Escobar, Richard Lovelady, let that sink in a little bit, Thomas Pannone, and Brad Wick. Positional players include three infielders, so familiar name there, David Bodie, Matt Shaw, and Chase Strump. One outfielder, we all know and love him very well, Owen Casey. And then, of course, four catchers, Jorge Alfaro, Pablo Aliendo, who the name kind of reminds me of, like, Pablo Francisco and Brayton Caliendo, like if you were to combine them together. <laughs> Pablo Aliendo, comedian, Pablo, Pablo Aliendo. <laughs> And uh, Joe Hudson, Joe Hudson, and then uh, Bryce Windham. Uh, so, Zach, you are going to Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona, for the first Cubs Cactus League game of spring training. You might see some of these guys. What do you think? What are your thoughts on these non-roster invitees? Um. So, yes, going to the game, I'm expecting – 
Justin Steele to pitch one inning of relief or one inning to start the game. So yeah. whoever pitches, it will be very non-consequential, whoever starts. Um, I'm expecting to see probably three to four innings of the regulars and then five innings of backups, including like PCA, Casey, um, probably a lot of Matt Shaw. And I guess Chase Strumpf is a weird one to me. He's not on the 40-man roster, but he's sort of like a fringe AAA type player that can play third and second. Um, I'm a little surprised James Triantos isn't on this list, but he'll be in the minor league camp. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to see guys like Brad Wick, Keegan Thompson, Ethan Roberts. I'd like to see some of those guys pitch, see what they have, and especially guys that have been injured. So that's specifically why I point out to Ethan Roberts and Brad Wick. They were injured last year, DFA'd, taken off the 40-man roster in the off season to make room for other additions. And they were brought back on minor league deals. So I'm excited to see some guys that have had good stuff, but then have been hurt. And of course, CJ old friend of the team, CJ Edwards was really good for a few years and he kind of tapered off and then strikeout rate plummeted, but he's had good, a good year and a good career in terms of limiting hard contact, even though he has been, not striking out a ton of guys. I want to see him dial it back up again. Let's see if Tommy Hadovy can work his magic with CJ. Yeah, some of these names in here are really interesting. I really had to Google them and actually research their numbers. Colton Brewer, I wasn't very familiar with. Chris Clark, obviously we know CJ. Sam McWilliams, we know Ethan Roberts. Cam Sanders had a really good spring training or spring last um last year and i think he was kind of rumored to maybe make an impact or possibly make the team i know a lot of people were clamoring for him to kind of make some kind of an impact on 2023 oh yeah uh, riley thompson so riley i'm not entirely sure about him mm -hmm. at all really uh edwin escobar we know he came over from japan in the npb um he had about like three point i want to say 3.11 or 3.13 era so he is kind of, um, what do you call it? Kind of uh, on the comeback trail, so to speak, back to the right. here. So we'll see how, um, if he can possibly make the team. Richard Lovelady, and we all love that name, obviously. Thomas Pannone and Brad Wick. Thomas Pannone was one of the first names that we had saw that you, that we signed when you were visiting for a Christmas break. Yeah. And we were laughing at that. Like, who's this guy? Who's this random guy that we could have signed? And Major actually signing. Saw, <laughs> yeah, I actually saw on YouTube a, a clip of him striking out four batters in a pirates game. And he actually has a really impressive um, location on his curve. Mm -hmm. And and the way that he was kind of moving it around the plate, it was impressive. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of rooting for him again. He's another lefty. Um, you know me, I'm really trying to balance this roster out as far as more adding more left left handed pitching. Yeah. So I like his delivery. I like his makeup. I think he would be an excellent um, addition to the team. Brad Wick, we know him. Uh, he, we're familiar with him. He's again, he's getting older. Um, what are your thoughts on Brad Wick? Brad Wick is like 6'11", 7'7", uh, 8 feet tall. He's massive. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a really good curveball, and I think, I think he has multiple breaking balls. He throws 93 to 94. So he just needs a little bit more command, but he's been out for so long. It almost reminds right. me of not quite, but almost like Braylon Marquez, like lefty with really good stuff, power type pitcher. But... I don't know. I, I know there was like the sticky stuff enforcement. There was a guy named Tommy Nance that was good for like two months for the Cubs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of a fringe, like super rare name for the Cubs. And then they banned the sticky stuff. They started doing inspections and he sucked. So <laughs> I don't know if that had something to do with Bradwick's success, but he was hurt a lot. So really for him, it's just health. There's a lot of players on this list that are looking to just be healthy. And if they can do that, then... The Cubs have a really good development system in, in the minors. So that'll that'll work wonders for them if they can get back on the trail. But 
as a lefty reliever, it helps to be a lefty versus a righty for this particular team, I think. What are your thoughts? I'm just curious, Zach, on uh, Ethan Roberts. I know he was building up. He's not quite throwing full strength. I don't think he quite yet. So what are your, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, so Ethan Roberts, I believe, uh, I think he sat all of last year, if I recall. Um, yeah. So he should be back pretty soon. Um, you'd hope that I, I think he'll be pretty close after spring. I hope he doesn't sit out for a full two years with Tommy John or a year and a half. But that's the way it seemed to trend in recent years. He's got a really nasty slider. And if I remember, he had a, he also had a cutter and sat in the uh, 91 to 93. So he's got good stuff, but he's still unproven. And so there's still a lot of possibilities for these guys to just take it slow, go to extended spring, stay in Mesa for extended spring training. And then as it warms up, go to Iowa for potentially in May. And from there... Let's see how they do. Like, I'm even looking at a guy like Keegan Thompson, who was really good in 2022 and fell off in 23. Let's see if they can rebuild their value in, in 2024 at Iowa, right? There's going to yeah. be a lot of opportunities, I, I believe. I, I don't think there's necessarily any star, maybe aside from Ben Brown, if he goes into relief, there should be a lot of openings in the Iowa bullpen, I would think. Yeah, for sure. Especially if some, some of those Iowa bullpen pitchers you know move up um we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on in the podcast about just fringe pitchers positional players that could possibly make an impact so positional players going back to the ones that we had mentioned so david Bodie, matt shaw chase trump um just curious to know your thoughts on those three which one of those three do you think um, could possibly make an impact at the major league level uh, David is a tough one because David Bodie was good in 2018, 2019, and I know he signed a multi-year deal. I think this is one of the last years of his deal. Uh, he can play in multiple different positions. I'm not sold on him. I Matt Shaw needs more time, but he's got the highest ceiling right now. Right. He's going to sit in double A for a certain amount of time. I'm sure quickly move up to triple A. So if there's injuries, Matt Shaw will make it to the big leagues. I think they'll maybe take it slow unless they absolutely need him and let him season a little bit more triple a, mm -hmm. but if he shows those exit velos, like that, that power swing, he's got that ability to get his foot down and unload and create that torque um, with his hands and with his hips and all that, like the torque he creates with the bat. If he's still showing that and showing a low strikeout rate, high contact, I think they'll give him a chance towards the end of the season especially if there's an injury or two. Like we know Nick Madrigal has trouble staying on the field. He takes 15 steps before he throws the ball third. So he's bound <laughs> to strain his hamstring with that windup. If the right. Cubs don't sign a guy like Matt Chapman, they're definitely opening the door for Matt Shaw later in the season, especially if Chris Morrell uh, doesn't, you know, be stay, become a mainstay at third base defensively. Then Matt Shaw's got, Golden opportunity, just play league average defense, and there is, you know, some decent playing time for you. Yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, another one, Owen Casey, we're really excited about him. I don't believe personally that he's going to break into the big leagues this year, probably more like 2025. What are your thoughts on him? Owen Casey has some of the best exit velo of the minors, and if you translate those numbers, uh, even uh, uh, in the majors, yeah. so... There is another thing, a pretty common thread here for all these players that are close to the big leagues that have a lot of power, Wisdom, Morel, Casey, is just getting the strikeout rate down. Casey showed better strikeout rate, uh, a better approach and a, a better patience, and lower strikeout rate when the, the, the sticky, I should say the tacky ball was changed in double A. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if he get, has a good approach with the regular ball at triple A. That would be more translatable from that level up to the bigs. But um, I want to see how he does against lefties. I want to see how he does against the slider from a lefty tailing away from him. High fastballs up in the zone. If he can show a little bit of patience, and again, that magical number is like 25% strikeout, then if he can get under that number, then it it's all there for him. The, the other question, too, is where do you put Owen Casey? Now, you know, say a Suzuki's in right and Haps in left. If there's an injury, then surely there's an opportunity. 
He's not on the 40 man roster, and Talkman and Alexander Canario are on the 40 man roster. So, and so is Brennan Davis, by the way. <laughs> right. So I think they'll take I think they'll take their time with Casey, like you mentioned. They're gonna give him this year and really develop and see where the rest of the roster pans out. And then finally we have four catchers. So Jorge Alfaro, Pablo Aliendo, Joe Hudson, Bryce Windham. Just kind of looking at their numbers. Uh, they were pretty poor besides um Bryce Windham. I'm kind of curious to see how he goes about this year there's a lot of hype actually surrounding him i believe he's one of the more athletic catchers that they have um, i was just watching clips of him he was in the outfield i guess he had converted over from an outfielder to a catcher mm. and he was making incredible plays i mean he he was running balls down in um for old dominion mm -hmm. and then last year he was he was, he made a really extremely athletic play um tracking down a, a sacrifice bunt that popped up into the air and he was running about 30 or 40 feet in about three seconds. <laughs> I mean, this guy gets up and he moves. So he's one of our more intriguing catchers. Obviously we like Ballesteros. Um, Moises just about Ballesteros as well as a, in terms of catching. Um, so, um, so let's get into our topic for today. We have fringe roster players, on the invitee list and fringe 40 man players. So these are players that we think uh, could possibly uh, lose their job as far as competition goes. Zach, who are your fringe roster players on the invitee list? So for, for pitching, I'm going to focus on bullpen since the starters are more or less pretty established. There's not a whole lot of give and take there. Essentially, you may, you may maybe add to a six-man rotation, but for, for bullpen, I'm looking at three guys in particular, and that's C.J. Edwards, Ethan Roberts, and Edwin Escobar. Escobar had, first of all, he's a lefty, so he'd be among very few options for lefties, even though he's not he's not on the 40-man roster yet, so he'd, they'd have to create a spot for him, which they could do. There's injuries. There's the 60-day IL, which opens up a roster spot for the 40-man. There could be a DFA somewhere down the road. He showed a lot of promise in the NPB, and he had good strikeout stuff, and that's a difficult that's a difficult league to succeed in since it's a high-contact league, and he did very well. We talked about Ethan Roberts, how he's got nasty stuff. CJ Edwards, he's had a history of success, and he's a veteran, so... I just want him to succeed just because he's a familiar face in terms of that's how those, those three guys are who I'm looking at closely for the bullpen in terms of fringe spots, making the last one or two spots in the bullpen. Uh, what are your thoughts on the bullpen? So I had listed guys that could possibly um, lose their spot. Mm -hmm. You had, had kind of listed that could make the spot, right? Right. I was trying to be optimistic. Right. <laughs> I'm pessimistic. So, <laughs> so I chose Palencia, Daniel Palencia. I think he has amazing stuff as far as power. I think he needs to harness his control and figure out how to rein it in a little bit, maybe take a few miles per hour off his fastball and locate a little bit better. I think Quas is an interesting option as well. I don't know if the walks are going to plague him this year, but he did walk quite a bit, it seemed like, last year. Um, Keegan Thompson, I think, is kind of a wild card. He could kind of go either way. He was really trending back towards kind of how he was before uh, 2023. 2022, I didn't think he had that bad of a year, right? He was dominant in 2022. He had a two-something ERA as a, as a reliever. Yeah, last year was really disappointing. I mean, it really sucked. I, I was you know, kind of hoping he would make um, make it back to the big leagues, but um, he never really stuck. He he did get better, you know, as the season went on past the All-Star break. Um, he kind of put together a little bit um, more solid um, appearances. So he's one that's kind of on the, on the fringe. And then NC Almonte, um, I know we did trade for him recently with the Dodgers. And uh, Michael Bush as well. 
but he's also one, if you look at his ERA, it spiked up to, I believe it was at five, 5.03 or something like that. So the year before that, though, it was incredible. I want to say it was like one something, mm -hmm. 2022. So he's kind of an interesting, interesting candidate as far as if he's going to make the team or not. So, um, yeah. what about your uh, positional players? Are there any positional players that you feel like would be on the fringe of making the team? You know, I'm going <laughs> to, you're the optimistic one here. So, yeah, I've got, I, I, I basically compiled a list of players that I think will be optioned to Iowa at some point during the season and up and down type players. So I think Alexander Canario will have some time in center, but I think he'll be optioned here and there. Talkman actually, Mike Talkman was pretty good in center field last year. I think he'll he'll be the mainstay as a fourth outfielder. But if the if the Cubs were to sign Bellinger and if PCA were to come up and succeed, then I, I'm sure Bellinger would play first, but now you'd have four outfielders. Obviously, Bellinger plays all over. PCA could play multiple spots. Maybe they would option Talkman down to make room, or maybe they would have to decide between Talkman and Canario. So they might battle for fourth outfield spot. Talkman had a 14% walk rate, which is really solid last year, and only a 21% strikeout rate. Wow. So, that's cool. yeah, there is a reason why Ross put him in the leadoff spot and he succeeded there was he had good numbers. That's a solid spread between those two. Good patience and good contact. He doesn't have a ton of power, but he's got good enough defense to give him a bit of an edge. And then I'm also really targeting the battle at third base. There's three guys that'll play third base this year for us. That's going to be Nick Madrigal, the guy who takes the big crow hop at third to get the ball over there. Right. He, take, he has a career 9% strikeout rate, incredibly oh. low but also only a 5% walk rate. So hmm. I'm curious if he wants to increase his walk rate and if that comes at the expense of a strikeout rate or if he has an opportunity to increase his OPS above, let's say, 680 or 700. And can he get his OPS above in the 700 range in uh, spring training? So if we see Madrigal take off and have a 780, 800, hell, 900 OPS in spring training, that almost gives him the job right out of the get-go. The other two that I'm looking at are Chris Morell and Patrick Wisdom. Chris Morell had a 31% strikeout rate the last couple of years. Again, they want him to get that number down a little bit. Wisdom has a 37% strikeout rate. This is probably mm -hmm. 10 to 15% higher than you'd like it to be. Yeah. Um, the, the deal with Morell and Wisdom is they have similar goals. They would like to get their strikeout rate down, although Morel is closer in that regard, and they, they both need to basically just play league average defense. I still view Wisdom as a platoon, not platoon type player, but a bench type player. Can it lefties well, but he's not a guy you'd want with second and third and one out. He might strike out, leave you with two outs. You need a guy like Madrigal more often not to put the ball in play. Now, if you don't have a lot of power, that's where you might default to someone like Morel or Wisdom with more power. But for them to get playing time and to not be used as a DH or used in a platoon or on the bench, they need to get the strikeout rate down and prove that they're at least as good or pretty similar to Madrigal on defense at third. So those are sort of my position players that I'm that I'm targeting in spring so far. All right, I will go over my list real quick with you. I I believe, uh, just kind of go around the horn here, first base, uh, Bush. I think Bush, Michael Bush and um, Matt Mervis are going to battle it out for first base. I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that spring goes for both of them. I see it going either way. I think Matt Mervis could rebound, and he could take the first base spot. I mean, if he's able to to slug and hit, and hit more, not strike out less, I think he can definitely get give Bush a run for his money. Horner is obviously going to slot in at second base, so there's nothing changing there. Morrell is interesting. So right now he's at third base. He could possibly DH. Um, but if uh, we sign Matt Chapman, like if Matt Chapman's one of those 
um, signings that we were rumored to sign, you know, from, from Scott Boris Corp, um, that could push him out. Could You could also stick uh, Canario at DH. I think Canario is going to be an X factor for the Cubs, personally. I think if you give him enough at-bats, I think he could definitely um, make an impact. Dansby's going to be at short, obviously. Um, the left and left, we have Hap. PCA for center field, I think, is going to be um, – he's kind of a question mark for me. We want to see him hit. So hopefully he can hit and adjust, and hopefully um, he's able to kind of figure things out. Um, Suzuki and Wright, uh, that's nothing changing there. He's going to be just fine. I don't see him, obviously, um, as a fringe player or anything. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting to think about Alexander Canario and Matt Mervis in, in 2022. They were in the top three in home runs in, in the minor leagues in 2022. Right. So Canario got injured in 2023 and then had to recover. So that's why he didn't get as much as, as many counting stats. Right. But another thing for him is strikeouts. So it's really the common thread, right? Mervis, strikeouts, Canario, strikeouts. Right. Any French player can they get the strikeouts down. For Madrigal, it's not strikeouts. It's just power. <laughs> It's the right. reverse. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about him, and I had forgot my question, but um, I remembered it now. What do you think is the the over under on Nick Madrigal hitting a ball to the the outfield wall? I, I mean, <laughs> like five, <laughs> five or six. Yeah, you know, over under that depends on how much time he gets. I'm thinking like two home runs, maybe uh, <laughs> the doubles for him, or maybe just gappers. You know, if we're talking about balls hit the warning track, maybe like. 10 15 <laughs> you got a windy it's windy city so the ball is going to carry a little bit if you put in the air some of these players you know you kind of wonder how they would do if they were given like an everyday job like canario i think canario wasn't canario the one that would sat on the bench for david ross it's like they called him up and everyone was like why aren't you playing more of these rookies that you know like like alexander canario i remember um before he had gotten injured like you said he was just tearing the ball up, you know, from in a triple a yeah, he, or triple a one of the two, but, um, yeah, so I'm really curious to see if council gives Canario more, um, playing time. Yeah. Just one last thought here before we wrap up, um, council, the reason why I am not afraid of this team, I think they'll succeed is council does well with younger teams. And it looks like they're pivoting. I mean, I wonder if a lot of other teams are doing the same kind of thing with the free agents not signing. They're pivoting towards a younger team. So Canario, PCA, Bush, all these guys that might be fringe players right now trying to turn to everydayers. Council might just give them the time. You might be like, hey, let's let's roll, give them the confidence, and then at least you get a sample size and see, like, what are, the, what are these guys, what are they going to be able to do? So at least we'll have a better chance. With Ross, you're right, he didn't. He didn't really play them very much. He didn't play Canario. BCA was pretty rarely used. So I'm excited to see what Council's going to do with this team. But, um, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us on the Brotherly Cubs podcast. If you have thoughts on today's podcast, comment them below in our YouTube chat. Or if you have any other interesting topics, please let us know. Hit the subscribe button turn on the notifications or join the conversation with us on Twitter at Brotherly Cubs or Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also, Brotherly Cubs is our username. I am Zach, and this is my brother, John. We will see you next week. Peace. Listen to this crowd.